Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Midday with Lajon and Valora. We are excited to have you with us. God bless you. Blessings, blessings. Come on in and invite your guests and followers. God bless you. Please share the broadcast for us. It means so much when you share um, so that other people will know um, to take part. We are excited. Thank you for your continued support. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday afternoon and we are um, so grateful to God for all that he is, all that he's doing in each and every one of our lives and um, just amazing. We're in expectation um, of what God has in store for us. The heavens are open and God is pouring out blessings upon his people that we will not have room enough to receive. And so uh, we certainly thank you guys again. Thank you. Um, certainly want to continue to invite you to our global mega conference in Tampa, Florida, August the 2nd through the 4th. It's going to be amazing. Um, so we're excited to have Apostle John Eckhart, Apostle Andrew Tao, um, Apostle Andy Edwarda, Apostle, um, and Apostle Andy Edwarda is from Curacao. We're excited to have an Apostle from Lima, Peru, um, uh, Apostle um, of course, Samuel. my husband, Samuel Abeleda, um, my husband as well, along with Sophia Ruffin and myself, many others will be coming in from literally around the world to be a part of uh, this amazing, amazing, extraordinary um, event that God wants to do here in Tampa, Florida. On the 4th, that Saturday, we were having a Caribbean barbecue on the beach. That's what we do when family gets together. It's a family reunion, so we certainly want to celebrate um, that we've never done um, a barbecue during a conference, but we're going to do it this year um, just to commemorate and to acknowledge everyone that is coming from around the world that has been a part of our Suddenly family. So please go to our website and register for that. We have various um, seating available um, for you um, as well as that Thursday afternoon for lunch and that Friday during a luncheon we will be having um, workshops for those that um, want to know more about the marketplace, you may have a marketplace ministry, but how do you take that to the next level? We will have with us um, Prophetess Michelle J. Miller Esquire. She will be there to help you to understand the importance of your brand, um, how to protect your brand. Um, even though you may have a name and you may have had that name for several years, how do you protect it from somebody coming in, taking it um, from you uh, because you didn't use uh, the necessary um, things in order to guard and protect that. So we will be going over those type things as well as um, ministries. Um, how do you take your, your ministry to the next level? We'll have um, various teams in media, in um, graphic design, all of those things that will assist you, photography, anything that concerns your ministry and how to um, go to the next level, um, they will be there to assist you in that process. Amen. I'm so excited to have you here with us today and uh, excited about what God is doing. Thank you for inviting followers. And uh, we'll wait a few seconds until people, uh, Kenya Nelson, we're going to be in Columbus, Georgia on, uh, I think it's the 22nd and 23rd. We'll actually be there. So really excited about, uh, hopefully you'll get to come to the meeting as soon as we get all the details. We'll put a flyer out and we'll be able to get that information to you. So, so thankful for you guys and uh, really appreciate each and every one of you for being here. And uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. It means so much again when you share for us because I let somebody else know that we're on. I want to give you a scripture. I want to show you something. Uh, I'm looking at the end of 2 Kings where yesterday and, and last night, the last couple of days we've been talking about uh, God releasing the fire. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I really thought about that. And then I'm going to, before I, before I end, I want to talk to you about something God showed me. Uh, for leaders, if you're a leader in the body of Christ, there's something God showed me uh, that I really want to kind of share with you before we uh, before we end the scope. So uh, the last couple of days we've been in 1 Kings chapter 18 and, and chapter 19. And chapter 18, verse number 41 says, And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the of abundance of rain. And so it's very interesting because after, uh, after the drought, after the consummation of the sacrifice, 
then came the rain. And so sometimes we, we look at our situation and we say, God, it's dry. We say, Lord, it's, you know, I'm in the fire. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. But God, for some reason, allows us to go. He does not allow that to take us out. He doesn't allow it to consume us. He doesn't allow it to destroy us. But it only allows it to refine us. It only uh, burns up the impurities. And then after that, God sends the abundance of rain. Yes. And the significance of rain is, is that rain uh, was symbolic of that which produces growth, that which stimulates, that which uh, propels us and pushes us us into our next level. And so as I began to think about it, I said, Lord, you know, even though even this in Florida, it's the rainy season. And so every day at a certain time, it begins to rain and it begins to pour. And you can almost, you know, there's a smell of the abundance of rain. There is a sound of the abundance of rain. There is a there is even a look in the sky when the yes. rain gets ready to come. Absolutely. And so because we live in this city where that's going on, we can begin to, to begin to sense that rain is coming. And I think it's even that way in the spiritual realm as it pertains to, uh, as it pertains to when God is getting ready to release the rain. Right. One of the things that I've seen happen is that right before you get your breakthrough, once you, before you get your, your next level, you will all of a sudden begin to get a certain amount of attacks. The pressure will get harder. The fire will get harder. The storms and the trials will get harder upon you because the, because the breakthrough is just about to come. Imagine what Israel was dealing with because they had been, you know, it wasn't like this was when the rain came or when the, when the, uh, when the fire came. It was, it was, at, the, it was at the beginning of their, their, their drought season. No, it was three years after their, they had started. Three, three and a half years they, they finally got, uh, you know, the breakthrough right. and sometimes we you know we don't we don't think about it like that we don't realize that sometimes there is a process that we've got to yes. go through and once we go to the but once we but but once we go through the process mm -hmm. we'll begin to receive the manifestation of the things we've been praying for many of you that are watching today you've gone through the processes you've gone through the challenges you've gone through the storms you've gone through the trials and in that in, in the processes you've gone through it's burned out impurities it's burned out challenges it's burned out areas in you where listen where you you were your own worst enemy at times come on your, your thinking processes, your flesh, your mindset, uh, other things, people that were around you, uh, all these things produced in you. But now that, that you've gone through that process, now that you endured the process, now that you've endured the refiner's fire, now the rain can come. Yes. And so God tells, uh, tells Ahab uh, through the prophet Elijah, he says, listen, he said, tell him to go, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. And so sometimes God begins to speak to the prophet that the rain is coming. And so yes. here is here is the rain. Here is, you know, here is the, you know, you've gone through all those other testing processes. Now here is the rain. It's supposed to come. And you go the first time and it doesn't happen. And he sent the man again. And he sent him again. The second time he came back, he said, there's no rain. He went the third time. He came back. And he said, there's still no rain. But mind you, in this process, process, the prophet was in, in the prayer position. And this is this is another thing that intercessors have to get ignited yes. for, uh, for for fire. So there's revival in the land. And when revival comes to the land, God will then send the nourishment. Mm -hmm. So he goes the third time, no answer, no solution. He goes back the fourth time, there's no answer, there is no solution. He's going back the fifth time, there is no answer, there is no solution. And so he goes down, I, I'm going to read it for you. Uh, and he says um, in, in verse 42, he says, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of uh, Carmel and when he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to a servant, go up now, look toward the sea. He went up and looked and there was nothing. He said, go again seven times. And so at, it came to pass at the seventh time. So again, he, he goes uh, five times. He comes back. So imagine some of you that have been trying. You knocked on the door one time and you stopped knocking because you believe that uh, that the answer that the, that the, the answer no was going to be God's final answer. But sometimes God wants to know if we'll keep going and see if we have stick to and perseverance right. to continue to knock on the door, to continue to try, to continue to push, to continue to endure until we see the breakthrough of what we've been believing for. I was watching this, uh, I was watching this, um, this thing. I cannot remember this guy's name. If I said it, y'all would know who I'm talking about, but you might even know it by the story. Uh, but, uh, he is a, a very famous, uh, he's a very famous, um, uh, public speaker. And uh, man, I cannot remember his name. But anyway, so he was telling the story. He said uh, that, you know, that, that there was a scenario in, in his life where he went to this, um, he went to, I think in one story was he went to a radio station. And so he went to the radio station and, uh, yep, Les Brown. And so he was looking for a job. And so 
they were like, well, you know, we don't really have a job. And so, you know, he would go back and he'd say, listen, are you, you know, can I, you know, do you have a job the next day? And so he kept going until they finally said, he said, well, you know, is there anything I can do? Can I take out some paper? You know, and finally he went there, you know, one day and the guy just said to him, he said, man, uh, go get me some coffee. So he went and got the coffee. The next thing he knew, <clears throat> he was started working at the place, but they still wouldn't let him on the radio. And so uh, the process went on and he kept going through the process, kept going through the process, kept going in every day, just getting the coffee, doing little errands, doing other little things. He said one day, uh, one day, the person that was supposed to be on air, well, I guess he got drunk. And so he was sitting there and he was too drunk to be able to, you know, to do the broadcast. And so he said, uh, he said, so in the process, he said, the station manager called or whoever was the, you know, the owner or whatever called. And he said, listen, he said, can you call one of the other DJs to come in or one of the other broadcast people to come in? And he said, did he really think, he said to the audience, he said, Do they, did he really think I was going to call somebody else? He said, listen, he got on, he got on the radio and he began to talk and he began to tell them. And I forgot the little thing that he said, but I really liked what he said. But as a result of it, of his perseverance and stick to guess what happened? He ended up getting the job. Now he's a, probably a multimillionaire and doing amazing things. Although his start was, was, was meager and his start was not what, uh, what people would have thought it was. No, he had the perseverance to say, listen, even if I went to the place and they didn't have a job, he said, listen, I'm going to, hey, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Then I saw this other broadcast where this man of God said uh, somewhat of the same thing. Uh, and so I'm, 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 I'm looking at this broadcast and the man says that, you know, he, he got this prophetic word or this word of knowledge that he was supposed to go to this place and get this job. And so he goes to the place, he gets the information, he goes to the place that they tell him to go to uh, in this city. He says when he gets there, they're saying, well, you know, we're not hiring. And then the man said, listen, you know what? He said, I, I, we don't have a job position, but today must be your lucky day. You're going to get a job. And so he said, he, when he got the job, stayed at the job, worked there 17 years. So sometimes when you get the prophetic word, there will be no fruit initially in the prophetic word. But, but, the, but, but the, the thing you've got to do is, even if there is no fruit in it, you got to continue to persevere and continue to stick with it until you see the manifestation of the thing that God promised me. Yes. you got to keep going until you see what God said. you got to keep going until you see what the prophet said. Sometimes we give up too early. We're like, well, why didn't I just walk in there the first time? Well, you tell me why the prophet had to, told the man of God to go back seven times. Yes. He, you know, I'm sure he got tired. I'm sure it was frustrating. I don't know how far up the mountain he had to climb. I don't you know. He says go. And so here, you know, he's at the top of Carmen, cast himself down, looked to his servant. He said, look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Right. And so he said, go again seven times. So sometimes, you, you know, you can, you can get frustrated, but this is why I believe the scripture says, be not weary and well doing, for we know that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Because sometimes you were so close. I love the little meme. There is a meme that has two men that are, that are it's like they're tunneling. And there's one up top and there's one on the bottom. And so there's one guy who, who stops and quits and gets discouraged about one, one more uh, he, you know, like slam of the axe before he gets to the breakthrough. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare give up because because if God promised, it's going to come to pass. Amen. And so sometimes, you know, somebody said, who you telling when I hear the word? No, but, but that, guess what? That, that's what happens sometimes. I've had situations where I've gone places. I wish you, I could tell you parts of my testimony. And, and when, when the situations that I had to go through where literally I, I went back and forth and wrestled with things and I wrestled with no six times, seven times, I went to places and they said, there is no other person that you can go to for this scenario. There is nobody else that you can appeal to. There's nobody else you can talk to. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, God Jesus. allows there to be somebody else that I can, that, that yes. I can talk to. Yes. He allows there to be somebody else that I can appeal to in my situation. So I'm telling you that no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, the, uh, the sound of the abundance of rain is coming to you today. It doesn't matter if you got turned down the first time or the second time or the third time or the fourth time or the fifth time or the sixth time. Let me tell you something. That one yes on the seventh time is going to literally listen it was I think it was Michael Jordan he talked about how how there were times he said he said he he I, think, I don't know how many times he missed you know people talk see how many times he hit but he said people don't know how many times I missed they don't know how many times I practiced and I missed how many times I was in a game and I was missed how many times I, I missed the game winning shot he said but at the same time he said and, and then, but what we know of him is how successful he was uh, even when we talk about people like Abraham Lincoln he failed more times than he won yes. but the times that he won 
was when he won the city, when he won the presidency. So what you got to understand is that sometimes the road is going to be challenging. Sometimes the road is going to be hard. But you got to know that when God spoke it and when God said it, you got to stick with it until you see the manifestation of the things that you've been believing God for. Listen, sometimes you're in a situation and things can be tough. Things can be hard. Things can be frustrating. You can be like, my God, when is my time going to come? But I'm telling you today, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Do not listen to the negative voices. Do not listen to the people that turn you away and say, my God, man, listen, you're, you're not going to make it. You're never going to become anything. Let me tell you something. If, if I had listened to that, one of my first pastors told me that I was not ever going to be a pastor. He said, I would never minister. I would never uh, preach the gospel because I didn't preach it the way that he, that, 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 that he preached it. I didn't say things the way he said it. I didn't do things the way he said it. I didn't articulate it the way he said it. And But let me tell you something. The truth is God had told me at a young age that I was going to be who, where I am and doing what I'm doing. The reality is I've gone through some challenges and I've gone through some things that should have disqualified me. I've gone through some things that should have, have taken me out of the race. But for whatever reason, God, when God chooses you, it does not matter what man says. It does not. I posted this morning a couple of posts. I was talking to somebody and they were saying uh, that, you know, somebody didn't necessarily, uh, somebody didn't appreciate who they were and, uh, or didn't appreciate their, their, their feedback on something. And I told them, I said, because somebody does not have the capacity or the ability to receive your truth or hear your truth does not mean that you, you, that you diminish who you are. Right. Just because somebody doesn't value you does not mean that you diminish your worth. You have the worth and the value that you are. I saw a man one time and he, he took a dollar bill and he tore it up and he ripped it and he crinkled it and he did all that. And, and he said, does it lose its value? No, it doesn't lose its value. Type it up, you know, tape it up and it'll still spin. Amen. Yes. And so you got to know that you are valuable. Everything you've gone through, every trial, every storm, every process that you have gone through is what it took to prepare you for your destiny. Yes. Keep going. Don't quit. Don't give up. The sound of the abundance of rain is your portion. Yes. The Lord said, I'm releasing it to you. Listen, I just wanted to see that, that you had what it took in you to continue to persevere. Your business, you tried it the first time. You tried it the second time. You tried it the third time. You tried it the fourth time. You tried it the fifth time. No, you've got an entrepreneurial spirit. It's going to come to pass. Come on. You're going to have those seven streams. Your ministry, yes, it didn't work the first time, but don't you dare give up because it didn't work the first time. Come on, relationships. You've been hurt more times than you can count, but listen, the one time is that, that, that after all of those trials, all of those storms, God is going to bring the person that you need into your life so that you can really be able to see the abundance of your rain. Your rain may be different from my rain. Everybody's rain may be different, but here I'm using it as a metaphor for increase. I'm using it as a metaphor for provision. I'm using it as a metaphor for breakthrough. I'm telling you that no matter what it looks like or feels like, don't you dare give up. I remember, last thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to let my wife do it, but my, 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 uh, in the military, I was, I was in a place where, man, I would run. And I remember when I first started running, brother, I would fall out of the run every time. I would get so tired uh, because when I was born, I was born anemic. And so there was an iron deficiency in my blood. So I had to, I, you know, I had to take pills. I had to do other stuff. I had to eat beets. I had to eat spinach in order to be able to, 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 to get my, my iron level up so that I had energy. But, and so here it is. I'm running and every time I run it was like I could not complete the run so then I'd have to do remedial training I'd have to go through all these processes but after at, at the end of my time about six or seven years in I was probably always the first second or third fastest person I don't care how far we were running or what we had to do I learned how to push my body and push myself to be able to achieve and tell my mind that you can achieve anything so as a result of that what happened was is that now now I was leading the pack. Everybody I trained led the pack. Every time I ran, I led the pack. And so I, I've had a, I have a mindset to always go above and beyond what other people are expecting. And then God forbid somebody tell me what I can't do. I start, Some people look at me and they say, well, man, you, you know, you talk fast. You're always articulate. But let me tell you something. I was, I used to stutter. I used, when I was a child, I stuttered. I could not talk. And so I, it was like I would be, I would stutter so bad that you couldn't even understand what I was saying. And so, but as a result, now you can't, you can't make me stutter. Come on. And so I'm telling you yes. that it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter if you're on your first try, your second try, your third try, your fourth try, your fifth try. I'm telling you, just like when the prophet Elijah told uh, Ahab to get down before that, because there's a sound of abundance of rain, and he tells his servant to go because there's a sound of abundance of rain, and keep going until you see it. I'm 
telling you the thing that you've been believing God for is about to manifest. Come on and share with us before, uh, before I finish the rest of this text. You know, it's so amazing because even as we look at Elijah, even with the experience with the fire, he was so confident in God when everything was stacked against him or against the situation. How do you pour water on the altar and expect it to burn? You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You, you wouldn't expect to, um, you know, if you have a fireplace, you wouldn't put water on the wood to try to light the wood. You know, it's not going to burn, mm -hmm. but because he had such faith in God, in the, in a supernatural God that was able to supersede everybody else's expectation, everything is seen as though was stacked against the situation but he knew the God that he served. He knew that he was able. If God said it, then there was no question about it. Whatever God told him to do, he did it. And so as, as, as God even told him, you know, um, you have the ability to control it. If you say there's going to be no rain, there's not going to be any rain. So here they were in this drought. And so he had to know what was inside of him. And so God is saying to each and every one of us today, you've got to know what's inside of you. You got to begin to speak it forth into the atmosphere and whatsoever you say, that's what it's going to be. Amen. And so you got to be able to speak life. You got to speak those things that be not as though they were in the name of Jesus. You've got to decree and declare it over your life, in your house, in, over your family, over your children, over your ministry, over your business. And so when you speak it forth, then it has to line up. It has to come, come to pass. It, it, you know, even as my husband was saying, it, it may, you may not see it the first time, the second time, or the third time. But be assured that God is faithful to watch over his word. He's not slack. He's not asleep. Uh, you know, they, they were trying to serve Baal. And, and so Elijah said, well, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's He's using the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he forgot. And so we don't serve a God that is asleep. We don't serve a God that forgets us. Amen. He's alive and well. He's not a God that you put on a shelf. He's not a almost God. Amen. But but he 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 is faithful concerning his word for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. So even now, when it feels as though some of you on there feel as though, hey, I've lost everything. I have nothing left. Let me tell you, you've got enough for God. You've got enough for God if you give it to him, if you give him what's left. Many times we're concerned about what we lost. No, give God what's left. Glory to God. It, it, you know, I begin to think about the multitude and there they were. They didn't have anything to eat and so Jesus said, well, how are we going to feed these people? And so they begin to ponder. The disciples begin to ponder in themselves. See, they, did, they didn't know the fullness of who God was even though they walked with him every single day. They didn't know really what he was capable of. And so he said, well, here's this little boy. He just has a little small lunch, you know, five loaves and two fish. And so when, when we give our little to God, he blesses it. Come on. And he multiplies it enough so that there are leftovers. This is a season where God is raining down upon you. You might as well get your buckets. You might as well get your pots ready because the rain is coming and you've got to be able to have the capacity. That's why you had to go through the fire. That's why it seemed as though it, you know you look around you don't see this person you don't see this that or the other no you had to go through those processes so now you're able to stand you're strong enough to stand you are stronger than you thought you were you didn't realize everything that you've gone through everything that you've endured everything every challenge that came your way you might have cried sometimes but let me tell you there was strength being built inside of you even through your tears come on even through your tears you learned some things and so now you've got some wisdom you let me tell you, you paid a price for the wisdom that you have. You paid a price for the anointing that you have. And now you're ready. Now you're able to stand. Now you're able to endure. You realize, my God, I came through hell and high water. I came through the storm. I came through the tsunami. I came through the fire. But now God is releasing the rain. Amen. Yes. Amen. Listen, it's coming. Amen. It is coming. It is coming. I don't know who this is for today, yes. but it's coming. I believe it's for a lot of people. Yes. Because I believe there are a lot of people. Amen. Yes. Somebody said two category five <laughs> hurricanes couldn't stop what God is getting ready to do in my life. Amen. Man, I love it. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We've got to know our authority. We've got to know what God has said and, and the ability that God has given to us. When the hurricane was headed to Tampa, my husband began to pray over our home and we began to cover our home and we say, oh, you're not going to touch our home. And let me tell you, the, the weatherman said, I don't know what happened because they were routing it and it was coming. Amen. It was coming. But the weatherman had to, had to acknowledge. He said, I don't know what happened. He said, there must have been some people that were praying. Mm -hmm. 
And so we got to know our authority in Christ Jesus. That's it. That's it. Well, listen, we love you guys. We're not going to stay on here long. Listen, if you have not, uh, if you have not registered for the, um, the Global Suddenly, uh, then you, I would go to my, our website, www.lejeanandvalora.com. We're also, as we said, we're coming to Columbus, Georgia this month. We're going to do a gladiator camp where we're going to train, I think, and activate in the prophetic and in intercession. And, uh, and so we're excited about that. And then we're also coming to Portsmouth, Virginia on next month. I think that's the, um, no, that's the 22nd, 23rd of this month, and then like the 12th, 13th of next month. Um, then, of course, the Global Suddenly, the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 2nd uh, and 3rd is going to be the actual meeting. And then the 4th is going to be a, um, what we call our Caribbean barbecue. And then, of course, uh, on the Thursday, we're going to do, uh, we're going to have the meeting where we're going to uh, bring in all of our marketplace experts from graphics, the graphic design, web design, um, uh, marketing, um, branding, protecting your brand. All of those people are going to be uh, stylists, people who've really been successful in what they're doing. We're going to bring them to the table to say, to let people know how to do what they've been able to do so that you can then monetize and increase uh, your, uh, your net worth by developing yes. multiple streams. And then, uh, then that Friday, if you say, well, listen, I know I got a call to ministry, but I don't really know. I'm going to bring in global, global ministry experts that I really believe are experts because they've done ministry in the areas where they are and doing an amazing job. And so we're going to bring them in for lunch, the luncheon on Friday. Now, if you register Premier, you get one of those for free. If you, uh, and then the other one, of course, you'll have to pitch in. Uh, and one of the reasons why is because, you know, of course, we have to pay for everything that goes with everything that comes with it. So uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're able to be a blessing uh, to you and be a blessing and do everything in excellence and in order. And so other than that, you know, the, uh, the, all the other sessions are free and uh, the night sessions are free. But again, we do appreciate you guys being able to come and support what we're doing. We really want people to experience the suddenlies of God, to really tap into their suddenly season, that season in their life where God straightway immediately suddenly really opens doors, causes breakthrough, begins to really launch you into your next season and your next place of purpose. And so, um, we just want you to be there with us. So we really appreciate that. We're spending a lot of time and energy and resources making sure we bring the best people in to be able to minister to you and bless you uh, with what we're doing. So not just another conference, but we really want people to leave our meetings uh, really, really being able to be impacted and really being able to go to their next level. Well, listen, we're getting ready to get out of here. Uh, the fasting info, we're doing midnight to three. So midnight uh, at midnight to three o'clock in the afternoon. And um, I need to figure out how to get that info for you. Um, so I'm excited. I'm really excited. Uh, yep, so Manila Chanel says she has her oils and she can't wait to see us in August. <laughs> yes, and we love you too. We can't wait to see you yes. either. It's going to be an amazing yes. time. We have people and friends that are coming literally from all around the globe. Uh, to be here, Central South America, South Africa, Africa, people coming from Asia, people coming from uh, even some places, even in Australia. So we're really excited about what God is doing. Some of my Canadian friends, I believe, are coming. So I'm excited. I really believe God's going to do some amazing things. And of course, all over the United States, people are becoming. So thank you for those that have already registered and thank you for those that are registering. And I think I saw somebody asked, how did they, uh, how did they, how did they get, uh, be able to sow a seed? And so you can always go to our website. And uh, so www.lejeanandvalora.com. Uh, Amen. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, we're getting ready to get off of here. And uh, when will we be in Portsmouth, Virginia? I'll get you that information. The flyer should be done very soon, Hardy Prayer or Hardy's Prayer. Yep, that's it. So again, we love you guys. We thank God for you. And we yes. look forward to talking with you again soon. Tonight we'll be on for Midnight Fire. We changed it from Midnight Cry to Midnight <laughs> Fire because Midnight Cry was getting crowded. I mean, everybody then was doing Midnight Cries. And so everybody wants to do Midnight Cries. So we said, listen, we, we want to do something that's different. We want to pioneer something different. So we said we're going to call it Midnight Fire. Yes. Last night, Michelle J. Miller was on. And so I really believe that uh, lately God has been doing some amazing stuff Jesus. as it pertains to the fire of God, igniting intercessors, igniting churches, igniting with the fire of revival, and uh, even igniting your gifts. And so we're going to pray again tonight, believe God for miracles. And uh, somebody, yep, that's what we're going to do, Nella Chanel. We sure are. Absolutely, we sure are. Well, we love you. We thank God for you. And we look forward to talking with you very soon. Meet me at the well. God bless you. That's right. Be ignited. Be ignited in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Agape says hello. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.